So what are the current recommendations for pregnant or immune compromised people in contact with cats? The overall big one is don't clean the litter box. And I hear this time and time again. People are like, I'm so excited to be pregnant, I don't have to clean the litter box for nine months. And you know, they don't know if their cat's shedding, they don't know if their cat's positive necessarily. It doesn't really matter. You just don't have to clean the litter box. End of story, all right? If, if you have to clean a litter box, so you've got an immune compromised position or you uh, disease and you get sick, if you have to clean it, the idea is clean it a lot. Like if you have no choices and there's no one else to scoop, then you need to clean it daily or multiple times a day to get that stuff out of there to avoid sporulation. Does that make sense? And so we use this sometimes, um, systemic toxo, which I'll try to talk about, I'll get there, um, towards the end, particularly a problem in AIDS patients, um, and that's when it became a big focus in the last couple of decades. And so the recommendation was to find somebody else to scoop litter boxes for AIDS patients that um, had cats, or to scoop really frequently, wear gloves and wear a mask, because they can be inhaled, good. Um, if you must clean boxes, wear a mask. Wear gardening gloves when you garden outside. Remember, cats are not the only source of contamination. Soils can be contaminated from cats. Um, and so you wanna make sure you wear gardening gloves and we recommend this in general. So all of you gardeners out there, you should have a set of gloves. And then you should wash your hands when you take them off. Wash your hands frequently and don't eat poop. <laughs> okay? So here are all the ways that you can help. And I would argue women of childbearing age should kind of look at this in general anyway. Yeah. You want to eat poop? No. Okay. <laughs> it's okay to lick. Is it okay? <laughs> is it okay to lick poop? No. No. No poopsicles. <laughs> Assuming that I have just received a face full of spores, what is the percentage chance that I will get infected? It is somewhat dose dependent. I don't know if I can answer that. So if you have a face full of spores, you may very well get infected. Um, it's gonna depend on your immune system. So is your immune system gonna tackle that or not? You will probably form antibodies to that. And so when you're saying infected, you are probably gonna ingest it. You will form antibodies. You may never get sick from it. Okay. Okay. But your body will most likely respond with antibodies to that as long as you are immune competent to do that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the percentage of people who get exposed to actually develop that? We don't know because you can't do a challenge study. So the question is how many people who get exposed get infected? To know that for sure, we would have to know everybody's exposure, which basically means we'd have to ask you all to eat poop, <laughs> infected with oocysts, and then measure how many of you ended up seropositive. And I don't think anybody's signing up for that experiment. We can do that in animals. We do it. And when I say we, I mean science. Um, but we can't really do that in people. So I don't know that answer. Um, I do know that in particular areas where the soil is highly contaminated, and we have studies on that, um, where they pull high numbers of oocysts out of the soil, in those places, certain parts of Latin America, um, Egypt in particular, and Africa, the seroprevalence is extraordinarily high, 60, 70, 80 percent in some cases of people in certain urban areas have very, very, are seropositive, have been exposed. Okay. Yep. So there are regions where it's really, really high. Yep. So as ridiculous as it might sound, is it almost a better idea for a young woman working in this field? Let me answer. So the question is, as ridiculous as it may sound, should I eat poop before I think about getting pregnant so that I will be positive? Is that your question? Yes. Um, let me address that as I hit the end of the talk, because what I'm going to talk about is some of the newer concerns about Toxo. So historically speaking, we have said, yeah, it's, it may actually be better for you to have antibodies, um, and people haven't been that concerned. With the AIDS epidemic and with systemic Toxo becoming an issue in some immune when people are immune compromised, um, that has become more of a concern. And there are some more concerns about whether we have some subclinical Toxo issues. So let me come back to that, and if I don't answer it, let me know. Okay. But yeah, I mean, your thinking is not crazy because a lot of us, especially women in veterinary medicine, have really thought about that and said, well, maybe I just need to be positive and be done with it. Yeah, Lynn. You would think, she asked, wouldn't you think all veterinarians and shelter workers have already been exposed? You'd be amazed at how low it actually is. And I don't have the numbers for you, but no, it's not actually true. The majority of them are not seropositive. And why? I don't know. Um, because we're probably being good about our biosecurity, right? Maybe, that's what I'll believe. 